So in this next section, we are going to really take a deeper dive into neuroscience or brain science. First, we're gonna talk about the acute stress response. Then we are going to talk about early brain development. And then we are gonna move into trauma's impact on the brain. And we are going to try to connect that to the various types of trauma that we've learned about. Type one, type two, and type three. The best example I have come up with to share with others about teaching them about the acute stress response is an experience that most of us has, have had, and that is almost rear-ending the car in front of you when you're driving. So imagine you are on your way to work and you almost rear-end the car in front of you. Take a minute to think about what happens in your body. How does your body respond when you almost rear-end the car in front of you? Your heart might race, your breathing might get a little bit more rapid, your muscles get tense, you grab the wheel. Do you think about doing all of those things? No, your body just responds. Our body responds before we even have the chance to think about what's happening in front of us. So let's say you almost rear end the car in front of you and you're on your way to work and the commute is slow because there's freezing rain, there's ice, maybe there's some snow. When you finally get to work that morning, maybe a little bit late, how are you when you arrive to work? Let's say a colleague greets you and says, you're late for a meeting, where have you been? How might you respond? you're probably a little bit more reactive, right? You're a little bit more um, put off by the way they greeted you because you're already on alert. You already are having a stress response because of what happened. When you get to work, what makes you feel better? It could be that you tell people what happened on your way to work. It could be that you say, I was gonna have oatmeal for breakfast, but instead I'm going straight for the donuts. Or it could be that you say, nobody talked to me for 10 minutes. I need a second to regroup. I just had a horrible commute to work. But what we want to think about is how our body responded. So that acute stress of almost rear-ending the car in front of you wasn't logical. It wasn't something filled with reason. There was nothing you could have done to change that experience. Your body experiences what happened as a result of that. Let's say you're at work and you had that experience and maybe your stress level came down when you were at work and you had a pretty good day, but you get back into your car that evening and the commute is still terrible because it's been freezing rain all day. What does your body do when you get into the car knowing how your drive to work was? Your body remembers the experience and you will be more hypervigilant, more on alert, based upon your experience that morning. You won't be as relaxed on your drive home. You'll be more cautious. You want to make sure that you're gonna do anything you can do to make sure that bad thing doesn't happen again. That is how we define the acute stress response. The acute stress response happens when we have something happen that we have no control over, right? We fear for our life, our safety, our survival, our car, our insurance rates, telling whoever we live with or who owns the car what almost happened if you're a student, right? So what we want to think about is that acute stress response going up and then coming down. So let's say you have this experience on your way to work. Then you have the white knuckle drive home. And let's say it's a Friday night. If you come home and whoever you live with says, you're home, you're safe, let's order pizza, put on your pajamas and sit on the couch, what happens to your stress level? It comes down. If you walk in the door and your child says, I'm late for soccer practice and I left my cleats in my locker and I haven't eaten, right? And we also have to pick up three other kids. What then happens to your stress response? 
So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to paint this picture of the difference between acute stress and post-traumatic stress. So acute stress goes up and then it comes down, right? In type one trauma, so a, a, something we can put a finger on, when a child has something happen, their stress response goes up and it comes back down, we hope. If that stress response stays elevated or exaggerated for longer than four to six weeks, it is called post-traumatic stress. So let's take a look at what could happen. In a type one situation, you could have an exposure to stress, but it could be so significant or so scary that that child can get stuck in that state of arousal or stress for a long time. In a type two trauma, you may see a child who has a couple of different exposures. So as you can see, just like we, we experienced when we were at work that day, our stress response went down, but then on the drive home, it went back up. And then depending upon what happened when we got home that night, it goes down or comes up. So in multiple exposures to trauma, like in a type two, it may be that there's some peaks and valleys. So over the course of time, we can begin to determine, is this child experiencing an acute stress response or has this stress response been exaggerated and prolonged? Now, what I wanna talk a lot about today is, is the experience of toxic stress or type three trauma. So in acute stress, you've got these peaks and valleys. Now in toxic stress, it's always stressful, right? Remember we talked about there's always something that happened. If you asked a child with toxic stress or type three trauma what has happened, they would not be able to tell you what. It is their life. So imagine how your body feels when you're almost rear-ending the car in front of you, or when you get back into that car and it's freezing rain, or you get home and it's not a Friday night that you can relax, how your stress response is. That is how a child who has toxic stress always feels. So go back to that body response. How does your body feel when you almost rear end the car in front of you? Heart rate up, muscles tense, rapid breathing. Can you think clearly, right? If somebody asked you to solve a math problem after you almost rear ended the car in front of you, would you be able to solve that problem? How did you respond to that colleague when they said, you're late for the meeting, or where have you been? you were defensive, you were reactive, because your stress level was already up. So in trauma, what the experts tell us is that we know the difference between acute stress and, and post-traumatic stress by time period. Acute stress is supposed to be very short term. It's supposed to be up and then it's supposed to come down. We are all supposed to respond like that. It's a survival response, but that response is not meant to be exaggerated or prolonged for any length of time. When that response is exaggerated and prolonged, it causes an impact on the brain that we're gonna talk about as we move forward in the content to come.